Deborah, are you there? Yes, I'm here. How are you doing? I'm fine, thanks. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from um, Sibukeng. From where? From Sibukeng. Sibukeng. Where, yes. where is that exactly? It's next to Fiona King. Okay, there in the Val, there by the Val River. Yes. Okay, great. Deborah, I don't know if you can see the screen, but I've tried to depict the question on the screen in terms of the lines that you're talking about. Can you yes, see the screen? It's exactly the same as the one in the question paper. Oh, wow. I'm a, I'm a psychic, eh? <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> okay. So just correct me if I'm wrong. But essentially, you get given a, uh, the equation of a straight line, which is this one over here. Correct? Yes. yes. And then you get given the coordinates of a point A, which yes. is at the top over there. We're going to make it at the top there. And the coordinates of A are minus 3 and 10. Is that yes. right? Yes. Okay. Now the first question says, find the equation of, this is K1, this line. And then they talk about K2 and they talk about K3, right? Yes. yes. Okay. So they give you, the question gives you the equation of K1 as x plus 3y plus 3 equals naught. And they say, find the equation of k2 if it's parallel to k1 and passes through minus 310. Is that right? Yes. Okay, so let's do that. If two lines are parallel, what can you tell me about their gradients, Deborah? That they equal to one another. Okay, so the two lines here will have equal gradient. So before I do anything else, I need to actually take the equation that they've given me and I need to write it as y equals because if I do that then I will have the equation of the line that's given in the form y equals m x plus c. You remember y equals m x plus c, hey? Yes, I do. So take the equation and take it from the form they've given it to you to the form y equals m x plus c. And you see that the gradient is minus 1 over 3. Minus 1 over 3. So are you happy that the gradient of K2 is minus 1 over 3? Yes. Okay, super. So now all I have to do is I know that I've got a gradient and I know that that line passes through minus 3, 10. So I've got the gradient of the line and I know it passes through minus 3, 10. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to go straight to the equation and on your formula sheet, you have this equation, which is the equation of the straight line. Y yes. minus Y1 is the M, X minus X1. So all you're going to do is you're going to substitute Y minus the Y at the point, the M is minus the third, and X minus the X at the point, which is plus 3. Because the right. X is minus 3, so you're going to get plus 3. You happy? Yes. Okay, let's multiply this out. Y equals... 1 minus the third times x, mm -hmm. minus the third times 3, minus the third times 3 is minus 1, and then the minus 10 that's on the left-hand side, I'm going to bring it over and it's going to be plus 10. Positive. So are you happy that my final equation is y equals minus the third x plus 9? Yes, I understand now. Great. So Deborah, for equation 2, K2, we have minus the third x plus 9, that is our equation for line K2. K2. Happy? Yes. And remember, we have the equation of K1, which is over there, which was given to us, and we wrote it in standard form so that we could get the gradient. Happy? Right. Yes, right. The next part of the question says, we've got to find the equation of the line that is perpendicular to K1, but also yes. passes through A. What right. can you tell me about the gradients of two lines that are perpendicular? Do you know? Yes, they have to equal to minus 1. 
good. They must multiply Equal together, together to give you... They have to give you minus 1. Good. So if I take the gradient of K1 and I multiply it to the gradient of K3, I must get minus 1. Now, the gradient of K1 we saw was minus a third. So what right. will be the gradient of K3 if the product must be minus 1? Uh, it would be, I have to get minus 1, so it would be 3. Well done, 3. So there you have it, it's that easy. You've got the gradient of the line and you know that it's passing through the point minus 3, 10. So again, we're going to go y minus y1 is the gradient x minus x1. We're going to substitute in the 10 in place of the y, the gradient in place of the m, and the minus 3 in place of the x. Right. And if I tidy that up, what am I going to get? I'm going to get 3x plus, plus 9. 9 plus, I'm going to take that 10 that's on the left hand side, plus 10, going to give me plus 19. 19. Happy yes. so far? Yes. Okay, fantastic. So we've got the equation of? Of K3. Of all three. You happy? Yes. And the final part to the question tells us that we must work out the length of the line AB. Right? Right. If B is, if AB is the distance between K1 and K2. So in other yes. words, we have to work out this distance here that I've highlighted right. in orange. You happy? Yes, I'm happy. Okay. Now, Deborah, I want you to tell me what's happening at B. Try and describe to me in your own words what's happening at B. There's at an intersection. Wow, that's exactly what I wanted to hear. It's an intersection. <laughs> well done. It's an intersection of K3 mm -hmm. and... Of K3 and of K... Of of K3 and K2. K1. Look K at the diagram. K1, K1, yes. Okay, K3 and K1. So to find the point of intersection of two lines, what are we going to do? Simultaneous equation. Simultaneous equation. Are you going to get a distinction at the end of the year or what? <laughs> well, hopefully I will. <laughs> okay, so we've got the equation of K1, which is y equals minus a third x plus 9. We've got the equation of K3, which is 3x plus 19, and now we will do a simultaneous, and we get minus x. I'm going to just multiply through by 3 because I hate fractions, eh? Remember well, when you've got... Students hate fractions. <laughs> what did you say? Students don't get along with fractions. Yeah, no, I don't think anybody does, hey? <laughs> they like yes. mean things. So the minute I can get rid of fractions, I do. Look here, I've got an equation and I've got a fraction. To get rid of it, I'm just going to multiply every term by 3. By 3, yes. So 9 times 3 is 27, 3 times 3 is 9, and 19 times 3 is 57. Let's work this out. We get minus 10x. If we collect the x terms, collect the numbers, we get 30. Minus 10x. So we get x is minus 3. Happy? Yes. And how am I going to find the y? By substituting from any one of the, um, the, the equations of y into, by substituting x into the original equation of any of the two. Correct. So I'm going to choose that one because it doesn't have fractions. So I'm going yes. to substitute into that equation and I'm going to get 3 times minus 3 plus 19, which is y equals minus 9 plus 19, which is 10. Yes. So my point B is minus 3 and, and 10, ten yes. which was my point A, wasn't it? Yes. Okay. So because my point A was minus 3 and 10. So yes. So now you know what I've done. Yes. What have I done? I've taken... Y equals minus a third x plus 9. So do you see what I did? I took oh. the equation of K2. And oh, yeah. Well, yes. Do and you see? To, yes, I see. So instead of taking this one to find the coordinates of B, I took the equation of K2. Do you see? Yes, I see. Okay. Do you understand the method, Deborah? Yes, I do understand okay. the how method. Would I, now that I know A and now that I know B, how would I find the, the length of AB? 
by using the distance formula. It's that easy, hey? Yes. Okay. So you're happy? Yes, I'm happy. Fantastic, Deborah. Thanks for phoning in. It was a great question. And thank you for helping me. Okay, pleasure. <laughs> Yeah.